Well, here we are, everybody, turn 132, and as I destroy Australia for the last time, looking at this and how the game is lined up at the moment, I'm still very, very far behind on tech and falling behind further and further. Steam power and railroads, of course, are going to win me any game, but focusing on some infrastructure might also help. So let's take Australia out of the game. I think I'm then just going to immediately go for America. There are two options, actually. There's one down there. And there's also one up here for two cities that are on different continents in the tundra that I can make into my super production cities. I don't know which one we're going to go for at the moment. I'm trying to keep an eye on the map. There are certain wonders that if they get built, it would be very much a ruining of my plan. But at the moment, we're okay. We can pick up Kassa. I need to get Kilwa down quickly. I think I'm going to beeline for Imhotep and hopefully Filippo, because Filippo will be able to rush out Kilwa in whatever city I build. And after that, Rural Valley is a little easier to go for. I can start throwing some trade routes to the new city. Like, I think we're okay, but I need to get the settler. I might actually see if I can get this settler out right now. Let's uh, let's do that next turn and let's get that going. Yeah, no, I like how this game is going so far. This is a really, really fun combination of just working perfect economy and then also having a bit of a game to just then throw a navy around. Like, I really enjoy it. This is, this is how I like playing Civ. I really like navy heavy games. So any game where you get to do that is a bit of a joy, but oh, just look at these tiles. Five food, four production, three gold. Yum. How much would my frigate do? 70 strength. Wow. Australia has a really tough city there. It's a little bit unfortunate, but I've got so many caravels, I can just afford to sort of surround this city and do all of the damage. We should be able to take that out, I reckon, probably next turn. So in the meantime, I will spend a little bit of gold just making sure I get Imhotep. Very important. Uh, oh, unfortunately, it's the worst engineer up next. My gold might have to be saved for that. I really do want Filippo, but getting that settler out is important. Now, I'm going to go and settle that coal. How important is that coal compared to a lot of other stuff? Hmm, pretty important. Pretty important. I'll get another Sattler and go and get something new. But uh, yeah, look, I just all these builders floating around. Every single fish I improve is just such a huge deal. I'm not saying that my empire smells entirely a fish, but it absolutely does. Oh, look at this improved coal tile. It's a 2-8 production. Oh my lord, we need more of these in our empire. Yes. The power has turned on in London. Oh yeah, 127 production. Not bad with a minus 10% penalty there. We'll take it. Now, Imhotep could rush Kassa. I think that's probably going to be a bit of a waste. I'm going to go and rush Mahabodhi Temple. I have an entertainment complex being built in Liverpool. I'm going to hopefully see if we can pick up Colosseum as well. So that'll be two rushes. And after that, I don't know. The Anxia Temple, that's an option. Guru's not really my play, to be fair. Also not rushable. Petra? I don't really have many desert tiles in any one city. I keep building over them, so Petra's not hugely useful. Maybe Canberra can get itself something like Terracotta Army, maybe? I don't know. We'll see. See how it goes. Actually, Terracotta Army would be really good for my navy, thinking about it. Yeah, that's actually not a bad idea. But the main things about steam power, okay? First of all, railroads. As we all know, railroads are the best thing in Civ 6, and I refuse to acknowledge any opinion that differs. They're brilliant. Secondly, we can now put canals down. Amazing. Especially in London, this is going to make our capital sing. I also have ironclads, which are very, very tough units and will help me to defeat America massively because I have a caravel based army and I'm now picking up five coal per turn. So that's wonderful. And even better, two movement for embarked units. So I can actually get my settlers and builders across the map a little bit quicker than before now, which is just a lovely thing. And now that I have steam power, I need to make sure the rest of my uh, equipment and army and tech is up to scratch. And really battleships are kind of where I would like to go from there. So let's have a look and see at our tech. Uh, stirrups, Ironworking, engineering, castles, gunpowder, it's all boosted up until the point we need three arches and two universities and two trebuchets. So three arches, I'm surprised we haven't got that. I think that should be a pretty easy replacement. Let's just get one archer there and one archer there and London, you build an archer after that point and then we should have the three. I have one university already. Birmingham uh, was about to build one after, so yeah, that should be fine. I think we should be able to get most of those boosts really easily. Rolling barrage, there we go. Go. Yes, that's the first setup in my amazing English production build. However, Casa. Now, Casa means that if I build a city on another continent and have a governor in it, it'll have 15% bonus production. Combined with the 10% I think you get from the card, the policy card that gives you production if you're on a different continent, that's 25%. And 
and then you add the 30% from Steam Power Vicky to 55, and then Warlord's Throne puts it to 75. So already we're getting pretty high, but yeah, that is a very, very handy wonder. Plus we have three governor titles now. Three whole governor titles. I'm liking this. Who would I want in my new production city? Magnus is cool, but only with vertical integration if it's in the middle of a bunch of other cities. So not hugely useful. Liang? Oh, Liang would be good to get fisheries, right? And there are uh, not a huge amount of fisheries available, not very handy, but there would be neighborhoods available. So that that's quite, yeah, that's useful. I reckon Liang will be a good pick and I don't normally use Liang. So we'll pop her into Newcastle just for now, but let's promote her to give aquaculture, Waterworks. I'm gonna just, yeah, fully use Liang. Someone I really don't use that often. Come on now, let's deal with this city quickly. Hoping we should be able to knock it out before we get too much problem. Uh, let's do this. I think that is the kill, isn't it? Perfect. Australia's out and has been folded into the English Empire. I'm sorry, Hawk of War. You are now but a pigeon of small skirmishes. You will not stand the test of time. More importantly, though, my five turn timer on the Warlord's Throne has reset. And we have just enough time to just sort of think about what we're doing before we then go and attack America. I'll tell you what I would like though. I would love, not retinues, where is it? Professional army. Let's pop that in immediately and we can get ourselves a delightful level three convoy promoted. So I've actually got into formation with the horsemen. Oh, this is interesting. I actually don't know this. So you can see the caravel's got plus 10 from convoy because it's linked with the horsemen. If I take that off, you can see it goes. Does it work with the admiral? If I put that into formation with the admiral, it does. That's useful. Well, remember that. Ironclad, 290 gold. Bam. Yeah, this this ironclad is now by far the pride of the fleet. And it must, it must get a name for Dirty Redoubtable. No, no. It shall become HMS CRH. Wonderful. Look at this. If I just show you how strong this is against you, and it's 95 strength. That's before I have the Admiral. Uh, 105 strength now. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going to have a lot of fun. Navy, just take the time. Upgrade yourself briefly. We move out at first light. For now, London is still doing all of its trade routes. Uh, I don't need to move them across to a non-existent city just yet, but look, I mean, look at the faith. The faith is so good in these cities. It is absolutely worth doing. But one thing I did realize as well is I've obviously got a settler that's gonna make its way over now to this new continent, but I need to send some religious units to go and spread these as well. So let's just quickly send out a single missionary. I don't think I'll need more than one right now. I really have not spread my religion at all. That'll mean when I found the city, I'll get my religion onto it and I won't need to worry about it after that point. So there is another settler. I'm just gonna make a third city over on this little gap between the Irish Sea and Newcastle because there's another source of coal and I'm gonna be burning through so much coal with all of these ironclads. There's my second source. So already I'm getting through five per turn, but now I've got 10. That'll put me up to 15. Whether or not that's gonna be enough coal? I, I don't know. <laughs> we we're gonna have one very coal-fueled playthrough, but it's okay. We'll enjoy it. Let's get our canal done in London. Do it. The returns till glory. And this is the Mahabodhi Temple. I want to pop that down immediately because I could use improving my religion. I would be the first person to do it. Lots of era score and lots of additional abilities. Mahabodhi Temple. Two diplomatic victory points, but more importantly, two three apostles, which means I can upgrade my religion essentially for three. Imhotep needed a classical era wonder to get their teeth stuck into, and that was a good enough one. So let's have a quick think. What are we going to do? Iron working. How have I got iron clads? but I've only just got iron work. Ugh, don't, don't ask these questions, Ursa. You will find nothing but chaos and insanity in them. <laughs> just don't do it. My city is only dominant in two cities. Really, that's crazy. I think I'm just gonna double up on the gold and go for, you ready for this? Teeth, haha. <laughs> and I might go for something to let it spread a bit better. Let's go Holy Order and I can get my apostles up a little bit cheaper. I saw Yerevan on this map, right? Yeah, so I could get really cheap apostles with promotions of my choice. So that works quite well, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Candy, yeah, oh, I just got astronomy in a tribal hut. Nice. 
I like it when you just get random texts in tribal huts later into the game. You're like, okay, this is why we explore. The London Canal is opened. Beautiful. Now that means my industrial zone's got a little bit more adjacency. Now it's gone up to a mighty total of plus three. Oh, could it get any higher? Probably no. Yeah, of course it can. I'll build another canal there. We are getting our canals done now. Yes. Coal power plants springing up around my nation. It's the casual production that I'm going to be getting across everywhere. This is what I'm really looking forward to. Liverpool, get yourself an arena and let's get ourselves the Colosseum as quickly as we can. Now this will spread it to my capital and that'll give a good chunk of amenities into London, which is going to be by far the most important thing that city can do. Now, one thing I need to do is think about getting some commercial hubs up soon, because as soon as we get banking, I can improve hours of Minerva and we can get our gilded vaults and more trade routes. But industrial zones, well, they have by far the biggest priority here because it's 30% extra production in each city. It's a huge difference. You can't sleep on it. It's it's massive, absolutely massive. Why am I still at war with Japan? Oh yeah, I totally forgot about that. They want 50 gold per turn. You know what? I think I'm fine just having a proxy war with you. Doesn't, I mean, if I don't know that I'm at war, does it count? <laughs> if, if the first reaction to, are we at war is, huh, I didn't realize, then yeah, probably you're okay. So I want to take professional army out now and I'm just going to quickly double check. I think I've upgraded pretty much every troop that I want to because a lot of levied units are around now. Another caravel I could upgrade. This one as well. Okay, now I can get rid of it. Let's get rid of professional army, put veterancy in and now we have invention. Four engineer points per turn, two extra ones for every workshop. I think I've got at least three workshops so that should be ten extra engineer points per turn. Let's get through these and also a good great merchant is popping up here as well. Oh, I'd love an extra trader capacity. So that is brilliant news. All right, though, America, it's time to have a little bit of fun here. I've got a research alliance. You haven't met my military ally, which is a bit annoying, but I think I could go for a joint war with Sweden on oh, no, 80 gold per turn. Yeah, I don't think that. Sorry, Lincoln. Formal wartime. Oh, he's so cool. He's so cool, but 600 military strength. I have a feeling most of his military strength is in actual land units. I don't I don't think that's going to be very helpful for him. But we shall see. One attack on Cincinnati and two. Uh, oh no, I do need the third attack. There you go. Is captured. It's going to be difficult to hold on to. Oh yeah, minus 1.5. That's not too bad actually. Victor, over you get. We'll take LA and Philadelphia as quick as we can. And then Boston. I, I'm tempted to make my trading city down here just because it's got access to more city states. Don't know yet though. I don't know. We've got two options. Like I've already got one satellite that's almost up here. It's just this is pretty landlocked. I'm going to have to build a couple of cities into canal locations which again is not a problem I don't mind doing that but one two another one there yeah and again I don't mind doing this like high settling games are some of my most fun games but I should probably just keep an eye on it Coliseum I'm really hoping my capital will stay at least not happy at least sort of neutral neutral is fine apathy that's what we want in our empire just apathetic citizens just I want everyone going around their life with grey faces and utterly deject sort of like meh I don't I don't really care what happens, I'm just going to go about my day. That's the sort of thing that makes London tick. 147 production, yes, 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 yes. This is before trade routes, by the way. This is the crazy power of England under Steam Vicky. I have not got any trade routes going yet. You just wait. You you just wait. We've we've got some we've got some silliness on the way. Oh, also Mexico City and Kamasi. I think I'm gonna take Kamasi first so that my trade routes are amazing. Oh, and I actually discovered another one. Nana doll. There's Nana doll. Okay, Nana doll is gonna like quadruple our culture per turn. Yeah, that's one we absolutely want to do as quickly as we can. Now I think I can attack and kill LA this turn, which is what I'm going to try and do. One shot, two shots. This is about Admiral, by the way. Three shots. LA falls. Beautiful. These are really, really good cities for me, actually. Lots and lots of sea resources. But all of that pales in comparison because we now have... Actually, we've got a few upgraded boats. I need to get some more names. But for now, the flagship HMS CRH is going to watch as someone smashes into Philadelphia and then they go, hold my beer. Let me just uh, show you what a 98 strength attack on a city does. Bam. What's your tea doing in the harbor, hey? The English have returned. 
America had never truly realized how much I loved having them in my empire, so I decided to rock up with a heavily fortified ironclad just to remind them. It's <laughs> such a good song. I always love that bit. I know it's, it's such a musical about like, you know, obviously celebrating all the cool things about America, but I just rock up and take away the fact that the... <laughs> The, the English songs are the best. What's the loyalty like? Minus 4.5? Victor, you are victorious. Get in there. Now, I do have pyramids as well now. That, that is very handy. That means I can now get six charge builders or, in fact, I can actually get a seven charge builder in Newcastle now. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that's just filthy. Oh, yes, yeah, so I might just make a few of these. Oh, I found the American Navy. It was at sea. Unbelievably, who would have thought? How's America got intel on me? Have I really not got printing? I really don't have printing yet. That's amazing. And uh, I haven't got any spies, but you know, that's just because I'm a mercer. <laughs> I, just, I just refuse to build spies. I find it offensive. But with that canal, that is now a beautiful plus five industrial zone, which is great. We're up to 121 production, which is lovely to see. The city can get better. Time for Venetian Arsenal. It's a six turn build. I will have to get rid of one of my favorite fishing boats, but you know what? It's fine. It's worth it. It is worth it because Venetian Arsenal, London. Oh yeah, that's something. Here is the Terracotta Army. I have a very upgraded navy, but it's going to get even more upgraded now. This is the last charge of Imhotep I used as well, so it's wonderful. I need to actually get quite a few more names for my boats because, yeah, I've got a few upgraded troops now. Oh, and I've got Vissel Banking as well. Oh yeah, this is a good look for my empire. So Merchant Confederation is 81 gold per turn. It's actually quite a large amount of money. I'm going to have to get rid of Diplomatic League, probably at some point but I feel like there's still a couple of city-states not many but a couple that I can get envoys with but I mean it's only two so actually Diplomatic League has sort of served itself well let's get Vissel Banking in I know it doesn't say that I'm getting any benefits right now but trust me I will once all the trade routes upgrade uh, update themselves up to 191 culture per turn I think I've got Kamasi now haven't I that was the big difference here so if I find a trade route yep look at that I'm getting 10 culture per turn from a trade route from London. Oh, that's good. Oh, I've run out of coal. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I won't last long though, because I do have uh, a builder here in Plymouth. Oh, it's just, it's such a good tile to start working, isn't it? Bam. That should give me enough. But I'm, I'm eating through coal per turn. 10 for units at the moment. I do need even more. But HMS CRH, I need you to lead the attack once more. I think you've got a little bit of a coal penalty at the moment. No, I don't. Oh, it's fine. It's totally fine. Right, well, let's just get that attack in. Uh, we'll upgrade all of our boats in a second. But Boston, I will raise to the floor because I do like the idea of just keeping a spare city just in case my northern one doesn't work. This was my first love. I just loved this bay. It's got that perfect balance between being totally uselessly difficult and also awesome at the same time. That's kind of why I'm going for that look up there. But before we name the units, here is the city of Le Leeds. No, 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 no. I'm going to call it the mega city of New New York. Yes. That's right, we've reclaimed it. Huff, the magic steam has been in there. It's been put into the city now. And the first few things we need to do is we just need to get this city set up as our new trading capital. Everything is gonna be thrown into this city. One thing I will just very briefly do is just whilst I've got Liang in Newcastle, just get a builder, lovely. Liang, now make your way to New New York. I will manually buy a granary, a water mill, and a monument. We'll get working on the Royal Navy dockyard. I will buy in a builder. Uh, a six, char you know, six charges fine for now. And then all of the traders I can buy with my gold are all going to go into this city. Now, it's going to be a little while before these get up to full strength, but they will get up to full strength. So don't worry. I now also need to go for colonialism so I can get colonial taxes. 25% extra gold and 10% production on cities not on my original continent. This is my first and only city that fits into that rule. But now just comes the very long and tedious process of upgrading every single one of my units one by one. Cardiff power to me good actually that will help to give me a little bit of power without using so much coal i like that that was getting a merchant so i can get mercantilism set up i don't think i've got any commercial hubs at the moment but we'll we'll build one very soon don't don't worry i'm owls i know i'm owls we'll work on that in a bit oh my engineer points up to 25 per turn now that is massively helping amber is the only luxury in the city of new new york so that's good we'll just build an industry that'll be a good tile to work to start with and 
I'll just keep the missionary near here just because I don't trust that it won't need them later. But look at these roots. They will slowly get better and better. Samarakand is the first route. Then Buenos Aires. These don't have options at the moment. In fact, there are no other trade routes that this city can make. But as I settle like this canal city, for instance, I should be able to trade through it next turn. Next turn, anyway. We'll see, see how that works. Oh yeah, it worked. It worked. Look, I can send routes through that city now. Oh, I knew that would work. Okay, I didn't. I, I had no confidence in that at all. <laughs> <laughs> but I knew it would work. Let's trade with our Ma. That'll pick that up as a city-state suzerain. Gee, that was really good. That was quite far across my empire that that was allowing. Cahokia is going to need a little bit more love. I've got five envoys here and I need nine. But Mogadishu, I mean, it stops my traders getting pillaged, which is a good thing. That'll get Mittler on side as well. Oh, I was fighting with Mittler for so long, having that on side. That makes me feel much better. Look at this. One population, one turn until growth, 18 production already. This is going to be brilliant. My flagship now is level four. This is the most famous. Yeah, you better believe it. It leads the charge. Naturally, this stolen settler is good because that now gives me plus 10 combat strength. So I'll, I'll take it. Buffalo is still doing the sinful thing of building Kilwa. I can't stand for that. So let's just start smashing ironclads against ancient walls. It'll be fine. Actually, you know what? That's really, really handy, that particular city, because it lets me into the Inland Sea and I can attack Washington, Charleston and Baltimore from this sea. That, that's helpful. Well, there's mercantilism which means I should know how much I've got to do in order to get some monopolies. Now, monopolies don't give me any tourism because culture victory is turned off. But it tells you how much of everything is on the map. Now, <laughs> the Dutch actually have a monopoly on coffee already, which is amazing. And almost tea. Wow, caffeine experts. But citrus, I just need to improve a couple bits more of citrus. I'll have that one. Silk is pretty close as well. Apparently, there's only one source of cotton on the map. I wonder where the cotton is. Probably go and settle that fairly easily. Oh, no, it's there. Okay, well, that would have to be a killing of a city-state, and I don't know how I feel about that. Probably quite good, to be fair. <laughs> We'll work that out. Now let's pick up colonialism for my colonial taxes card and check in on the city of New New York. It's looking good. It's looking good. Till, uh, it's population two and it'll only be two turns until the next growth. So we'll take that. Adelaide. Is Adelaide? Which, which city is this industry going to be in? It is Adelaide. Yeah, in you go. It's start to grow a little bit quicker. I, I'm looking for products later and products... We're not far away from that. Economics... Do I rush economics? You know, I'm actually going to go banking and then I'm going to go, um, hang on, banking, military science. But I would kind of like to think about getting my owls gilded vaults out now. It's about time. To put it lightly, I've been putting it off, but I now have the infrastructure and the production and more important of the population, I think, to be getting away with it. Oh, Mogadishu took their frigate back. No, 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 no. Give that back. A thousand gold? Oh, I'd rather just build my own. Thank you. Okay, well, we'll ignore that for now. One, oh, you're gonna, oh, they don't have enough movement. I, I, this, this escort formation, I was trying to be really clever there to get myself the combat strength, but I don't have enough movement to do it. But we are now starting to press into America's cities. Philadelphia is now super loyal. They have a trebuchet sat on my campus, not attacking me or pillaging. It's the strangest thing. I don't know what's going on there, but I'm, I'm not complaining. Oh, I had to just start talking about it, didn't I? It just pillaged it. They've been stood on that tile for, I would say, about five turns without pillaging it. But now they've pillaged it. Strange. Oh, also, I just made an industry. It just got flooded. Look at that. It always happens. I, as soon as you talk about something, it starts to flood. Seven food that tile's got, though. That's a good tile. One attack from Buffalo, and then in comes the flagship. 98 strength. Wabam! Oh, yes. Okay, it's not going to take too many more of those attacks, I don't think. Yeah, I thought you might want peace as soon as that emergency failed, Japan. But it's good. It means they're going to stop attacking my random city-states. I was afraid that they would be able to take a couple out. Like, my cities are totally safe, but the city-states? Oh, cannot be taking that risk for any longer. Here comes a regular ironclad attack. Buffalo is taken. I'll pop Magnus into it just to keep it nice and safe. And 
in comes the flagship into the bay. I think the next target has got to be Baltimore. So in we come as I attack from the other direction. The flagship goes bam, wrecking the walls and we push through. And there's a great engine here. So this is a culture bomb every time I finish a industrial district. A bit rubbish. Leonardo da Vinci, however, he is more useful and I've almost got enough gold to just purchase in. I am rushing through now because I really want Filippo as quickly as possible because I want Kilwa done in New New York. It's already up to three population. It'll keep going up. Russia are chill with peace as well. That's good. They were just about to start pillaging an industrial zone on the side of my empire. They, they slipped a knight through. I didn't realize, but it's all good. Now we have peace. Peace in our time, if you ignore my war with America. But that doesn't count, as we all know. Oh yeah, lots of luxury trading there. I've got a lot of diplomatic favor. I could trade for 167 gold per turn, which I'm going to do. I'd rather take the gold per turn from my ally than I would actually vote. Who needs to vote? Venetian Arsenal. Ah, yes. Ah yes, now we're going to build a lot of boats very, very quickly. Now my capital is already pretty good at building units, but if I put the naval card in, I'm pretty sure I can kick out a frigate or a sea dog every turn. And my kind of aim is just like the English Empire, the sun never sets on it. I plan on having as many frigates as possible to literally blot out the sun, which is difficult because I'm going to have to sort of stack them on top of each other. I haven't worked out the details, but look, it's going to be great. Oh man, Raj is great. We need a better government. Oh. We need a better government. I'm going to get colonial taxes instead of merchant confederation. I lose a little bit of gold per turn. But what that now does is we have the rather amusing situation in New New York where I have 45% modifier. I have 20% from my Warlord's Throne, 10% from that card, and 15% from Kassa because Liang is now established in this city. Plus, I can start to flood this city with some more gold. I was just thinking about whether I want to get Da Vinci. I might just wait. This is my priority city at the moment. So let's get 12 gold per turn for a lighthouse, which is just lovely. Then we'll get a shipyard, which gives me... Oh my lord! That is ridiculous! One food, 14 production, 20 gold per turn. Oh wow. Okay, that's um that that's rather a lot. We we don't mind that at all. This city is going to continue to grow. It's on 55 production already. Do I just start hard building Kilwa? I mean, I, I can get another district down uh, next turn, so this will actually be a good opportunity to get the industrial zone down. So let's get one turn's worth of ancient walls. I'll get another trader in that city. Okay, perfect. Yeah, no, th this is, that's, that is a good city. And with trading, I can actually afford Leonardo da Vinci already. Now I can use him twice, so I get two boosts, but more importantly, workshops are going to give me six culture per turn, as well as all of the ridiculous engineer points per turn. So yeah, th this, these, these are going to be very handy. What did I want in terms of my government plaza building? Intelligence is good, foreign ministry is good, Grandmaster chapel is good. I have a lot of faith per turn, but I think I might go foreign ministry because the extra favor is good, but I like the ability of the half price buying when I have all of these city states on side. It's quite handy. Oh, Torre de Belém. Oh, maybe I should put Torre de Belém in New New York. I can't. Ah, because of where, where I've put down the harbour, that's a coast tile, and all of these are luxury, so I can't remove them. Yeah, maybe it's London that does that then. Torre de Belém. Actually, that will put a lot of... Actually, I say that. It'll put only one city is on a different continent right now. Apart from my American cities. Actually, that's not too bad. Gives me a bit more gold per turn. Ah... Uh, yeah, hmm, I don't know. Don't know if I want that. I just build a sea dog first. Well, now that I'm English and I have colonialism, what do I do? Oh, that's right. Make a museum with everyone's stuff. I, I mean, sorry, borrowed thing. Hmm, being English can be a very complicated affair when you start looking at uh, history. <laughs> <laughs> Baltimore, you can, in the official words of the great Lieutenant HMS CRH, uh, you can do one. Oh, that's close. Oh yeah, naming units. Right, hang on. Down here we have the beautiful HMS Helicopter Kicker, as well as HMS MKI-233, very precise. HMS Calumbilly and HMS Portland. It actually works quite well considering I am uh, attacking America right now, but you know, we won't worry about that too much. Oh, I need a land unit as well. I can't help but feel that you have the short end of the straw, but uh, Dad Tato, you're controlling a musket. Safe, safe travels. Go and go and be annoying to Baltimore. Oh, oh, combat, combat, Dad Tato. You see, the thing is, I, I name units and then I get very attached to them and I see them being attacked on multiple sides and I'm like, 
Oi! I want you to live! Don't do that! Ah, oh, dare I dare. Oh yeah, I just sold all of my Diplo Thaver, so this emergency will probably go through. I always forget about that. I think about Diplo Thaver and I'm like, you know what? The only use I have for it is using it in World Congress. But it's not at all. It's not at all. This is to stop this exact situation from happening. And Sweden has just walked off with like 200 gold per turn. Oh, Sweden. That is a betrayal for the ages. <laughs> okay, well, first thing I'm doing is nabbing that settler. Thank you so much. Knocking your unit out of the sea. This is a betrayal. This is a betrayal and I'm not happy. That's my fault for not renewing the friendship quick enough, by the way. But let's face it, this was always going to be a domination game. You know? Let's not let's not kid ourselves. <laughs> so let's get the navy. Let's get rocking. We we're going we're going angry. This is angry, Ursa. Ursa's been betrayed. A betrayed in a game where I attacked everybody. Terrible. <laughs> do I sound sincere enough? I hope I hope I do. Oh my goodness, so many new trade routes available now. Yeah, this, this is awesome, right? Mexico City, I think, actually, although it's not a good route. That is, suddenly, things like zoos and water parks and uh, industrial zones affect over a longer distance. So that is a really handy little conversion. Look at that. New New York, it's only two turns to getting another housing. Oh, another population. That's amazing. That's really good. But I think an industrial zone here is absolutely the play. So there's Leonardo da Vinci. That's a boost to chemistry which is okay and we get a bit more culture now which is good I think it was worth about 10 20 culture per turn something like that pretty handy pretty handy we'll take it okay military ally I need you to get involved in everything here oh come on why are you not getting involved in the war sometimes I swear the military allies can just be like uh no no we d I don't want to get involved and you just look at them and you're like really you are quite literally my ally for this exact purpose like what what is with this sudden bashfulness when it comes to war there we go Callum Billy strikes Baltimore and onwards, flagship CRH. We're going to move across now to Charleston. And this, I think, is slightly better defended than before. No matter. We will slam the ironclads in. Here we go. The city will fall. It'll fall quickly enough. And before I forget, there's Ritual. So now I do have access to Gilded Vault. So I should think about putting a couple of commercial hubs down where I can. An Admiral that lets me pillage things faster. Well, okay then. There's Filippo, by the way, so we can now rush a wonder. And uh, yep, Kilwar is going to be put into New New York. It, it's just too good an opportunity. Well, printing gives me another level of diplomatic visibility and the sea dog. Arguably better than the sea cat, but we'll not go into that today. Now, M -A -M -K -I, oh, apologies. you go and heal yourself. Cal and Billy will take up the mantle. One attack, then Portland comes in, and then CRH. Oh, yes, Charleston. You will not survive long, friend. Oh, I picked up Oracle. Ah, oh, it's amazing how many wonders you steal when you, when you start taking them all. I'm going to say Amber is probably going to get banned this time round, so that's what we're going to vote for. And Sovereignty, where are all my trade routes going? Where are all my trade I've got a lot of yellow and a lot of white. So I'm going to suggest that yellow is probably going to be the one to go through, and we'll vote for Trade City State. I'll put all my votes under that one. Maybe it'll go through. You don't know. I don't know. Oh, no sugar. Oh, no sugar. I clearly am sweet enough. Where is that? Oh, I had four copies of it. Actually, a lot of it. That was right at the top. That is not a resource I would have guessed at all. Never mind. Oh, frigates. Frigates are being built now. Ah, yes. Perfect. I have a lot of extra nitre. Now, my military ally is remaining chill. However, the Dutch. I feel like the Dutch are an obstacle in my way in order to get to Sweden. And as we all know, I can't stand an obstacle. I just refuse. I just... I refuse. So we're going to go and send my ever increasing navy over and we'll go see if we can deal with the Dutch. And oh, I love all the canals. Oh, they make me so happy. I've got a lot of cities now building boats. Like I'm not, I'm not messing around anymore. This is no more Mr. Nicer. So, you know, I, I am building boats, but after all the canals, it's important that I get the canals down. That, that I think I, I should just spell out as being obvious, but you know, some people may not have realized just how awesome canals are so yeah i'm, I'm building them everywhere because because i can okay time for kilwa i think what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna wait until the industrial zone is finished then i'll put all the buildings down and then new new york should be able to get a huge amount of production towards it but oh i'm looking forward to this callum billy makes an attack portland makes an attack and then in comes crh can we take charleston yes we can did you see that 
That coal just jumped to a six production tile. Oh yes, that's lovely. Let's get some, let's get some builders in. I love it when I take somewhere over and I'm just like, you know what? Needs, needs a redo. It's like when you buy a house and you redo all of the, uh, <laughs> the colors on the walls. You just, you just paint everywhere. It's like, it doesn't really need doing. It was fine as it was, but because it's yours now, it just, it needs a new splash of color. Exactly what's going on here. Natural history. That's water parks. I like water parks. Water parks mean that my nation is finally going to be happy. Everyone will be happy. You can see Kilwar is going to be built in 10 turns. This is an unhappy city, but let's just rock this up. 74 production per turn. Just do a bit of trading, just so I know I have enough gold to really make you enjoy this. There we go, so 74 gold. We buy a 74 production. We buy a workshop, that's up to 78. A factory, up to 107. Coal power plant, up to 130. I'm now 138 once I rejig this all. Kilwar says it's going to be done in six turns. Not quick enough the meat not quick enough for me so we'll build it in three and once we're done with that i think i'm just gonna put Ruhr valley down as well what do you reckon this begins is gonna be effective or not effective 264 culture here's nan nadol that'll give all of my districts on or next to coast or lake tiles to culture let's just have a quick readjustment 406 so we've got <laughs> Like 60% extra, something like that. It's totally fine, totally balanced. Don't even, don't even worry about it. I, I wouldn't even think about, you know, discussing it. Just accept that it's fine. That's what I would do. Okay, we have water parks. What else does a healthy English empire need to grow and thrive? I will pick up Reform Church briefly, and then I think, yeah, we're gonna go for the tier three governments. A democracy sounds like a really good idea to me right now. It really does. Sweden's in the normal age, but I realize I have an ironclad right next to their land and, and they're very high population. So do I just attack one of their cities and take it? Like there are no walls here. So that means I'm invited in, right? Is that how it works? Pretty sure it is. Military science. Oh, look, Lord Dadtato. Go on, stand in the line. It's much better than not. Now, do we go economics or do we go refining? Hmm, let's go economics. I've got a couple of merchants just sat around. I reckon we could do something fun with them. At any rate, Kilwa has been built in my trading city. That means that it gets 30% production on military units as well as regular districts and buildings and things like that. As well as 30% extra science and culture, but it's the production we're really after today. Eat, turn, real valley, you say. <laughs> <laughs> That's looking pretty good. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay, so we're already on 75% modifier and 30% towards buildings and wonders. Like, I have a lot of city-state friends, so we're going to be getting a lot of bonuses here. Let me just tell you now, it's only going to get worse. There's Hong Kong to join in. A Muscat, and I'm going to put another one onto Buenos Aires so that I get extra three production in the city for the coal power plant. So now New New York is on 181 production. So Vissel Banken is still doing the Lord's work for me, which is wonderful. Harbor adjacency, that, that shipyards are now giving me like 160 production into my nation. I, there's, there's a lot of good stuff here. I probably don't need natural philosophy as much as once I did, but quite a good card. Serfdom is doing me a lot of good as well. I just need, yeah, I need more government slots. To do that, I need to build more wonders like Forbidden City and Patala Palace and stuff like that. Oh, the water park's finished in London. That's handy. Means I can go Ferris Wheel. I'd rather be buying in these buildings and then producing boats because my production goes a lot further than my gold does on things like that. Oh, Aquarium. The Aquarium, I always forget that it does so much good. Aquarium puts a science onto sea resources resources, doesn't it? That's awesome. I like that. I, I always forget about that particular bit. What do you reckon's more useful here? Conservation or going to ideology? I was just thinking about whether or not naturalists may be something we can pop down. I have very little land. Very little land. I don't even know if national parks are going to fit in my empire. Why can't you make them out of lakes? I don't know. I mean, there are places we could pop them in theory. It, it's a bit squished, but I'm so reliant on sea resources that actually I can get away with not improving all of my tiles. Not worth enough though. So let's go civil engineering, nationalism, urbanization. Well, we'll head that way to start with. Time for economics, two banks. I need to do that. I need to build more more commercial hubs, full stop. But banks are something that would be really handy. Got 
Portsmouth is just about to finish one, and I've got New New York. Not far off being able to fill one out as well. Do I do, do, I do rush that through? I can build a commercial hub in Birmingham, actually. Hey, that'll help. I, I reckon we can get economics boosted. It's worth doing if we can help it. I keep changing my mind, but I'm going to take a brief dip into electricity first because seaports. Oh, yeah. That's an upgrade to the shipyard, and it's going to massively help us. And as I mentioned before, this uh, city with Sweden, I've just been able to waltz in and take it which is great. I'll do that. Don't even think Magnus is needed over there anymore. So yeah, just come and claim it for me. Thank you. I think this atoll is a perfect circle. Look how cool that is. Oh, that's awesome. So there was like a perfect inland sea here, but we've kind of now taken over, but we don't need to worry about the specifics. I'm sure it's fine. We, we're just we're just taking it over for the good of everyone. Do you see how quickly colonial taxes is actually becoming better than Merchant Confederation? 105 gold is good, but 140 gold now 25% extra gold on all of my trade routes from new new york i was actually thinking one thing i hadn't placed down but i really need to is the holy site because obviously i have my religion here it's doing really well we've got a lot of population following it and this would increase all of the gold routes from my nation by plus eight on each route which is then multiplied by 25 percent. so it's plus 10 gold on everyone i'm thinking that is not a bad idea got a fun little city park upgrade that i can pop down from liang i don't build these very often but a full culture per turn which isn't very good but it's also worth an immunity because it's next to water and that makes my city super productive new new york is now way more productive than london my capital is on 179 production new new york is on 207 which i think is pretty good all things considered now i have a bit of a naval upgrade on my way uh, i'm skipping past the dutch i was very tempted to go for them but having just had all of the success with sweden i think you know what gonna give it a go you see i said this was gonna happen before lord dad <laughs> dad <laughs> god there's been a murder there's been a murder the city flipped i totally didn't notice but it was gonna flip next turn and then line inventory spawned and they both attacked i'm sorry look you can just put this down to the fact that i'm a terrible commander okay this is why i'm not entrusted with actual troops <laughs> it would be it would just be one oversight after another. Ruhr Valley, 20% extra production in that city. I don't really have any mines and quarries, but the 20% production is all I need. Just that alone, combined with my 30% production from the Age of Steam, gives this city far too much production. But let's just check in quickly. So we've got minus 10 from amenities. That's not good. But plus 95% from modifiers at the moment. <laughs> plus 95%. Oh, and the mad thing is it's only going to get bigger. It's only going to get bigger and better. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Doughboy91, Sean Gratis, Portland, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Devil X, Skeptical Bear, Craig Brown Trail Mix, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Matthew Hatch, Amir E.C., Rom88, Radio Torre, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Boy Zorro, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truand, Creston, RB Hedge, Mushkin Mandeltort, Ezri Dax, Debel Time, Shoelace, Burial, I'm Daft, Guberman, Clint Hennes, Thank you all for your support. It's amazing. See you all next time. Goodbye.